Hey guys, welcome back to Roto Renovations, where today we're going to learn how to work on a small engine like this pressure washer. Here we go. Alright, so we'll try full start. All right, so that's about all we get out of this thing. All right, so the three essential things for a small engine to run are fuel, air, and ignition. So one, you wanna check your fuel, make sure that it's not old, check it, make sure you have fuel in it, make sure that your fuel switch is on, and if all these things check out, then you will be good to go. Also, if you have an air filter, make sure it's not clogged. Or one of the ways that you can troubleshoot is just by removing the air filter altogether. That way there's nothing blocking the airflow into the carburetor. And the last thing is the ignition or the spark plug. So if your spark plug uh, needs to be tested or if you don't know how to test it, it's, there's an easy way to do that. Just pull the spark uh, cable off. You can get a socket and remove the spark plug from the engine and then ground it out by touching it to the engine while somebody or you pull start it, and then you should see a spark on the spark plug. So let's go ahead and remove the spark plug and I'll show you how to view the spark. You should see a spark on it. And there's, the spark. there's that spark. So we know the spark plug is working fine. Because I prefer to not troubleshoot by sitting here to continue pulling the pull start, I'm gonna remove the pull start and I will turn it with the drill. When you do this, you want to make sure it's rotating in the direction that it would be if you were pulling it. Just... All right, I know it's getting fuel because I can smell gasoline in the carburetor overflowing and coming out. I know it's getting air and I know it has a spark, which means that there's gotta be something clogged in the carburetor. And so now our next step is to remove the carburetor and clean it out. All right, to remove the carburetor, there's two bolts that hold it in. So here's the first one. Because this carburetor and the air filter housing is too close to the metal portion of the pressure washer. We cannot remove it. And so what I'll do is loosen up the engine mounts on the frame and we'll turn the engine a little bit so we can actually remove that carburetor. When you're removing the carburetor, keep in mind that there's typically a gasket or two between the carburetor, engine, and possibly even the intake housing. If the gasket is stuck to both surfaces, use a small flathead screwdriver or a razor blade to separate the gasket from one of the surfaces so that it doesn't tear. In the event that the gasket tears, the engine will most likely still run fine, but if you're nervous about it, you can always purchase new gaskets online prior to servicing the carburetor. Once the gaskets are successfully separated, you can remove the fuel line and linkages from the carburetor. If you don't have a fuel shutoff valve, just drain the remaining fuel, if any, into a container. Some linkages connect with a simple 90 degrees bend like this, but if yours has a Z-like bend, you'll most likely need to remove and rotate your carburetor to disconnect it. Thankfully, the wheel had a quick release pin because even though I removed three of the four motor mounts, I needed a little more space to remove and service the carburetor. All right, now that we have the carburetor detached, we can start to service it. Um, you'll see there's plenty of dirt and grime on this carburetor and sand, and before I start taking this apart, I'm going to use just a regular old toothbrush and brush it off so that it's not falling in the very places I'm trying to clean after I take it apart. Many carburetors have a float valve and bowl which contains fuel at the base of the carburetor. There's a drain plug that will allow you to drain it prior to removing the bowl, though even after draining the bowl there will most likely be some residual fuel left in the carburetor. Once you drain the bowl, you can unscrew the bottom and remove it from the carburetor. Once removing the bowl, you'll have access to the float valve. When the fuel level rises, the float rises and closes the valve, stopping the fuel from coming into the bowl. Likewise, when the fuel level drops, the float drops, opening the valve, allowing more fuel into the carburetor. Slide the pin to one side, allowing you to remove the float assembly. The little piece attached to the float is what opens and closes the valve. Be careful when removing the piece that opens and closes the valve because sometimes there's a spring which will want to shoot off when disassembling. 
so keep your finger over the piece when removing it so that the spring doesn't get lost. Here at the center is a piece that allows fuel into the carburetor. You should be able to use a flathead screwdriver to remove it, but be careful to use the best size so as not to strip it when removing it. This piece will not completely back out with the screwdriver alone, so once you feel like it isn't unscrewing any further, turn the carburetor over and tap it onto your hand or workbench so it will fall out. You should be able to see through this piece. If not, it's probably clogged and needs to be cleaned. This particular carburetor has an additional piece in the main shaft which looks similar to a flute. If yours has this, make sure you don't lose it when tipping over your carburetor and that you can see through all the holes ensuring that nothing's clogged. This engine has a fuel shutoff valve built into the carburetor which tends to hold residual fuel. There's also a gasket to seal it so be careful not to lose it when removing the bowl. As you can see, there's some brown gunk in the bowl and one port, so it's definitely in need of being cleaned. I disassembled the rest of the fuel shutoff valve and there's a little black gasket that helps seal the valve. Remove this so that it doesn't get lost when cleaning, especially with compressed air. Always take care to open things slowly and stay organized so that you don't lose any pieces and you remember how things go back together. Typically, you can find a schematic of your particular carburetor online, so if you can't remember where things go, that might be helpful to look it up prior to disassembly. When cleaning out the carburetor jets and ports, you can use canned air, carburetor cleaner, or an air compressor. I prefer using an air compressor because it's typically more powerful. I highly recommend having some safety glasses to help prevent fuel and other debris from going in your eyes throughout the cleaning process. As you blow air through each port, you should be able to feel the air coming out of another spot. Turn the carburetor over and look in all of the little nooks and crannies to make sure that you clean any and all holes that allow fuel and or air into the carburetor. The way every carburetor works is that it creates a perfect fuel to air ratio to help the engine run properly. Right next to the throttle valve you'll find several tiny holes that need to be clear of debris in order for this to happen. I typically use unwound picture frame wire or you can use piano wire or something similar and insert it into each hole ensuring that they're not clogged. After that I'll shoot air into them ensuring that they're clear. After the carburetor is clean make sure that all of the internal parts are clean before reassembling the carburetor. If you have a fuel valve that assembles similar to this one, make sure to tighten each screw a little at a time, creating equal pressure on the gasket as it's reassembled. Now you can reassemble the fuel valve gasket and bowl, fuel float assembly, the pin that holds it in place, the pieces in the center shaft of the carburetor, making sure not to over tighten that piece, and finally, the float bowl cover. Now that we have the carburetor cleaned, if, you, if this area is really dirty, you would want to clean this up before putting your carburetor back on, simply because you don't want dirt to go get in exactly what you just cleaned. Reconnect our linkages. Before we put our air filter housing back on, you want to now reconnect the gas line. A little bit of this vacuum tube was split, and so I just took a razor blade and I cut off. And we had enough excess in here where it shouldn't be short. Make sure to tighten each nut or bolt a little at a time, applying equal pressure as you're tightening the carburetor and air filter housing. After getting the engine reassembled and checking that everything was back together, I put only one of the engine mount bolts back in while I tested to make sure that the engine worked. All right, now that we have some new gasoline in here, I have the hose hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and put it on choke, turn the fuel to the on position. And then again, I'm not really interested in spending my time trying to do pull start. So I'm gonna use this at least whenever we're starting until we make sure it runs well. All right, now that we know it works, at least with the drill starting it, let's go ahead and put our pull start back on here. Put the switch to the on position and let's give it a pull. 
All right, guys, now that we know it's running, you can go ahead and finish putting your engine mounts in. I hope that you were able to get yours running. If you have any questions, comment below. If you like it, like it. Please subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Peace and God bless.